God. Amen. If you have your Bibles, um, if you can stand and turn to Philippians chapter 3, we want to welcome everyone. If you're a guest here, I don't see any guests, but if you're a guest here, I didn't spot you, uh, we want to welcome you. No, you, well, see, you won't. Well, that's great. I, I, I'm a person, I don't consider you a guest. You, once you come to my house two times, hey, you're not a guest any longer. Well, thank you for being our guest. If you're a first-time guest, I don't see any first-time guests. And we're glad to have each and every one of you as a part of us. And we're, we're glad to have Sister Ma Michaela as a part of us. Uh, Sister Michaela is from uh, North Carolina, Brother Wayne Huntley's church. And she's in uh, graduate school here at the uh, University of Maryland, Baltimore, right? UMB campus. And... And uh, she's with us, and maybe we can keep her for a few years, and who knows, maybe longer. Amen. So please make sure you uh, get a chance to greet her and uh, shake her hand, and make her feel warm, and welcome. Amen. I kind of uh, rustled and uh, toiled in terms of uh, the direction, and as, as we went on in service with the worshiping and everything else, I was tossing back and forth. And uh, with what to preach, and um, I think I'm going to settle on on this. I, I really had this in, on the plate for a few uh, months, actually, and I had something else as well, and I'm just really feeling to go in this direction. Um, and so we'll see what happens. I believe every time we come together, God has uh, direction, He has purpose, He has a will. He has a word. Amen. We should never leave out the same as we've come in. Praise God. I said we should leave out differently than what we've. Amen. We may start doing this. We enter everyone entering this door and everyone go out that door. Just to come out differently. But let me say this before we go any further in this. And I won't do my stand up ministry. I have everyone staying for ages and ages. When I communicate over the pulpit, most of the time, most of the time, it's never for just one person. Because I know, I, some of you know me, I'm not afraid to talk to anyone. And so if I say something over the pulpit, you can rest assured it wasn't just for you and I'm talking to you. Uh, never been afraid to talk to people about what I have to say. And so let that fall on the ears that need to hear. Let it trickle out all the way across the sanctuary. Because sometimes we can get offended what is said. I've had too many people say, I knew you were talking to me. It's like, what? I wasn't even thinking about you. I don't think that highly of yourself. <laughs> Amen. I'm kidding in, in some way. But I don't hide behind the pulpit. I don't need to. Because, quite frankly, I'm here to help us all get there to heaven. And if I had to say anything to help you get to heaven, see, we think we can get to heaven any old type of way, with any and everything. I'm not talking about you. Because when I get to point and touch to somebody, why are you talking about me? What does he mean by that? Stand. And so, the pastor's here to help you. Men of God up here to help you. Women of God up here to help you. Woman of God. We're here to help you. The Bible says that the fivefold ministry was given as a gift from Jesus to help you get to heaven. Won't you thank Jesus for that gift? You may not always like what is said. I didn't always like what my mother had to say, but she never said anything bad to help me go somewhere that's in a bad place. She, every time she said something, it was to help me to be a better person. 
Hello. And while some pills are swallow are, are hard to swallow, in most cases, when it's taken for the right reason, it's probably good for you. It was medicine that you needed to take. Amen. So all that was free. Philippians chapter 3. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. If you don't, don't think you have anything else to rejoice about, Why, why should I rejoice? Why are you people all dancing and clapping and happy? Because the Bible said rejoice in the Lord. You may not like me, but just rejoice in the Lord. And Paul said, the writer of Philippians, he said, to write the same things to you, to, to me indeed is not grievous, but for you, it is safe. What I communicate to you, it's not grievous to me, even if it, I have to repeat it. It's safe to hear the same thing over and over and over again until you have it. Beware of dogs. Beware of the evil workers. Beware of concision. For we are the circumcision, which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Jesus Christ and have no confidence in the flesh. We'll drop down to verse number seven. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss. For Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dumb that I may win Christ. He said he counted all things but dung. I thought this word dung meant what most of us think this word dung means. And I'm sure we should have an idea what dung is. But it doesn't mean dung, meaning the waste products of an animal. Though I thought that and I preached that. But it's actually referring to that food that is left over, the scraps that you would give to a dog. In other words, like the pig slop. If you ever lived in the country like me, how many lived in the country before and had to, and slopped them hogs? You never slopped the hogs, but you saw the slopping of hogs. Well, I lived in the city part of the country, but I went, I, I visited the country part of the country, and where they slopped the hogs, my friend, it is one disgusting thing. And I, don't, I can't even understand why I like bacon after looking at that and smelling that. But it's the refuse of the leftovers. It's what you feed the dogs. It's the, the, the leftovers. And I'm not talking about good leftovers. And Paul was saying, I count all things but just scraps that you would give to a dog that I may win Christ. Everything in my life I'm going to count as nothing but scraps for a dog. Because nothing in this life is of any value and everything in this life is equal to that compared to when in Christ Paul was saying I want to preach to you for just a couple of minutes and we know that is relative like the couple of minutes you've been standing I want to 
want to talk to you on the subject of the grand prize. Everybody can be seated except for Nikina Brown. She's being so obedient. You can be seated, Sister King. That's an inside joke. <laughs> she was sick last Thursday and wanted to know what the service was about and wanted the notes and all that. And she said, well, did y'all preach? Did y'all, what happened? She said, did you, did, did you do this or did he have, did, was that a stand-up anointing? <laughs> was that on, you know, we had to stand up the whole service? And so anyway, I said, okay, I'll make you stand all. Why is it that mankind has the propensity to complain about what we don't have? About three people said, right. And you know that's the truth. Right down to the simple things. I mean, I like it a certain way, you see. When I'm eating my, drinking my coffee, I don't, I don't want certain type of creamer. I want table cream. And if my wife doesn't have table cr uh, cream, I'm going to complain. I'm serious. I know it's nothing that you complain about. But when... I don't have what I'm comfortable with and what I'm used to. I don't like it, to be quite honest with you. Amen. I wake up in the morning, there's no coffee, and I had to go over to the store to get some coffee. Something is wrong with that picture. Amen. And there are certain foods I just have to have at a certain time and a certain point, and you know what I'm saying, and you know I I, I have to have air in my house, and, and if the air does, if, if the AC go on, go out of my house, oh man, I'm you know what I <laughs> I'm strapping up, I'm preparing for war. This is gonna be a battle because I can't take it. I can't take the heat. You know, I, I'm serious, and I, I, I kid you not. I remember our air, my, my, my daughter's air went up, and, you know, she was like, they had to come over, and it's fine, come on, and everything else. Because I can understand that. I'm like, come on, come on, sleep, come on, sleep over our house. You can stay in our bed. I, better, I don't care, because I understand. I feel for you. I sympathize with you. Because if I was in that situation, I would lose my mind. Our air went out. I think I went out and brought, like, four or five fans. <laughs> Seriously. Straight out. L lifted up every single window. The garage door, everything. Why? Because I have to live in my comfort zone. And I have to live a, a certain way. And I told my wife, I can remember, and uh, you know, you, if you live in an apartment complex, they say it's not an emergency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it's not an emergency. But we, we've come to a place, and I, it's really an emergency for us, right? Come on, we don't have any air. Hello. <laughs> and, but, but, and some of you, I'm sorry if you don't have central air, you know, maybe you don't understand what I'm saying, and you're used to it. But I'm sorry, I've been used to central air for a long time. I remember what it was like when I was in the country. Now, you may have had air in the country, but... Um, I was in the country, and hey, the way, the way to get air was that, you know, <laughs> knocking off my glasses, you know, roll up the windows and has the fans in the windows and all that, and we didn't have central AC, and, and I would go with my friends' houses, you know, because they had, well, one, one friend, they had, they, man, you go in there, it was like an ice box. It was like, whoo, it was like, man, I was in heaven. And, and it, most, some, most of a car, most, you, every single car now, for the most part, it comes with AC. Back in the day, you didn't have AC. Man, that was a serious luxury to have AC in a the car. They didn't have AC in a the car. 
And so you were used to sweating and sweating and sweating. But now, it's no way in the world I'm going to do without AC. But back then, it was all part of life. But I've, I've, I'm sorry, I've gotten spoiled. And my wife said, you know, you're spoiled, but she's spoiled too. There are certain things she just has to have. She claims she needs it, but she, but you know, you go in the closet. I don't have any shoes to wear. Well, just pick one of the 20 or the one of the 30 that you have right here. What do you mean you don't have any shoes to wear? I don't have a dress to wear to this function. I mean, choose from all of them. I don't get that. But that's how we are. Hello? So don't try to act like you, you know. I know this isn't on what I, I'm, I'm getting there. I told you it was relative as far how, how long I'm going to take to get there. But we have gotten to a certain place that we don't want to live without certain things. Even in our Christian walk, we can become spoiled. We can go into a store and, and, and they don't uh, um, act a certain way and they don't present certain customer service. Hello? If that waiter is not acting like they are apostolic, godly and friendly, they just messed up their tip. Hello? I was saying who I was going to get on that one. <laughs> Some of y'all are smart enough to know. I'm, that was just a. And we, 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 we you know, we, we tip and everything else, so we treat people based on how they act. And I'm not talking just talking to you. Because I've gone to some stores, I'm like, man, I'll never come in this store again. Right? Man, I don't get right down ugly with them. Do I want to? Uh, that's for somebody. But we, we've, we've become accustomed to having things a certain way. And we, we, and we have a sense of entitlement. I talked about that this morning. I think I messed up a couple of people with that this morning. Hello? And things have to be a certain way, and we have to have certain things, and, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I can go on and on and on, but I'm not going to do that. But we have to come to a place. Here we go. He's going to make me do it. When I go into a store, I, I'm telling you what, I went to go, buy the, I, I went to go pick up the, uh, the chairs for the fellowship hall. And I went to Walmart. I went to the Walmart that's in Rosedale. Do y'all feel my pain? Now, I normally don't go to that Walmart unless it's like a certain time of the day. Because it's just crazy in there. And then when you try to get some help, I went to the, I went to the counter, and I stood at the counter, and it was, where's Alex? Was it four or five uh, workers? Four? They stood right there. Alex and I stood right there on, on the other side of the counter. They were talking. They were dancing. They were partying. They was hooping and hollering. They were having a good time like we weren't even there. I'm like, come on, hello. And, oh, I'm bubbling. But I had to act right. I had somebody that's a part of the congregation there. <laughs> I said, Alex, don't we need a card or something? Go on over. Go on get the <laughs> Actually, when you went to go get the card, I was still, I was nice. I just walked around and, like, seriously, came back. I, I kept my cool. I really did keep my cool. But sometimes, folks, we, we, we have to understand that who we are and who we're representing. 
and we have to count everything. I know this is just quite simple. Loss that we may win Christ. See, we don't look at it like that. Because, come on, honestly, if, 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 if Jesus Christ just manifested himself right there, huh? We'd be like, God bless you. Take as long as you need to. Is this good, Jesus? I love you. Do you need some help back there? Jesus, am I doing fine? Huh? <laughs> we would change it. Hello? Hopefully, well, hopefully you would change it. But our lives supposed to be a, 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 in a place where everything that we do, Paul said, I count all, everybody say all, all, all things lost, but lost. Everything is done that I may win Christ. Meaning he took that attitude in everything he did. That he could win Christ. I know, you know, I'm sorry, I'm not there. If you're there, God bless you. Won't you come pastor this church? <laughs> I'm serious. I'm not there yet. And actually, Paul actually said he's not there. He said he hadn't attained, he hadn't arrived yet. But he said, one thing I do, counting those things that are behind, or oh, forgetting those things that are behind. I, I'm reaching, I'm pressing toward the mark of the high calling of God. There, there's something that I'm trying to reach to. There's something I'm trying to obtain and I'm trying to attain. To. There's something I must have because I'm not where I need to be and I'm going to keep on pursuing and those things that, are, that I, I complain about, those things that I gripe about, those things that, that I get so discouraged because I don't have this yet. And we complain about what we don't have. Especially when we look at somebody else. You know what I mean? Somebody, somebody else pull up next to me in their Mercedes, their Beamer. That's a BMW. I know a little slang. It's a little. Just enough to be dangerous. I'm, huh? He said, I'm talking now, huh? You like that talk, huh? Watch it. <laughs> Get you in trouble. And, and I'm, I'm, and that's nothing wrong with my car. But then I get to thinking, man, I would look better in that Beamer than him <laughs> or her. Man, I think that Beamer would be right. Don't worry, she's getting she brought to panic. Not gonna get it back. So she can start thinking about those those car news. I'm, I'm not trying to get a Beamer. <laughs> look at her. Uh huh. I know. See, I know. Next year I'm gonna show up with that. I'm looking like, hmm, man, look at those, look at those rims. So y'all ladies wouldn't know about that. Man, that's nice. I can see myself in that. And then when the light turned green, and I pressed the thing, and I hit, and, and when they, I'm especially saying, oh, man, I wish I could have that. Why? And, and what I have now, I'm not really satisfied with what I have. Why? Because I see, I, I see something else that I don't have. Oh. I'm going to embarrass you. Come on down here. Come on, hurry up. Now, if I have to go over this because she's taking long, I want you to know that. Come on. All you single men, stand up. I'm going to help you out. Don't you? Huh? Single men, stand up. I was just trying to see if I was going to see a tennis match right here. I saw the women going. <laughs> Any meaning, no. <laughs> You walking. I'm going to make my point. Huh? And so 
You see somebody walking, guy hugging and all that, mm -hmm. and you start thinking, what are you thinking? You're thinking, you know, how did he get her? Why don't, we, why don't we get in church and act like this? Okay. Let me sit down. Sit down, man. You single women stand up. You see, you're saying that, I won't use myself because I don't, you, huh? I, I know she's not saying that. She's single. Oh. Don't worry, brother. Come on. <laughs> it's okay. Oh, calm down. I did not do your, your wedding. Yeah, oh, yeah. So I know she's not single. All right. So, he, don't worry. And he walking, he walking down and, you know, and you're like, well, what's she doing with him? Oh, come on, y'all. She was on. She said, he looked better with me. She ain't talking about, you know, no fight. <laughs> Look what I just started. <laughs> Peace off. She wasn't meaning like that. She meant in general. What I'm saying is we always want what we don't have. Oh, I wish we could be honest in the house of God. Uh-huh. So y'all didn't know I was going in this direction with this thing. Y'all about ready to go eat them hot dogs now. <laughs> we want what we don't have. And Paul said, everything I have, I don't want so I can win Christ. We're too busy looking at what we don't have when we should look at everything that we do have and say, hey, I don't even need that because I know what I'm trying to reach. I know where I'm trying to go. I know what I'm trying to get to. I count everything but dumb. If Jesus Christ was coming in 10 minutes, you would be the best Christian ever. All of you. Talking about, oh, I hate to do this. I'm sorry. I hate to do this. Talking about being married. I, if Christ was coming in uh, one hour, would you be like trying to hurry up and find a, a, a bride really to get to and all that? You sure? Positive, yeah. <laughs> Looking young. Hmm? You wouldn't be like, hurry up, let me see. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got 59 minutes. Pastor, could you marry me, please? <laughs> Stop it right now. Okay. You can have a seat. I, you know what I think you will be doing? I think you will count everything but dung. Because I think you'll be trying to win Christ. I had one hour to win Christ. I had one hour to get everything together, get everything right. I had one hour. And Paul was saying, this is what this means to me. It means everything to me. I count everything thing that I could gain or everything that would be gained to me, I'm going to count it as loss that I may win Christ. 
And if God chooses to give me this thing, fine. But I'm not going to allow it to get in my way and be the center of my attention and to lose out on Christ for that thing. I can't count it but loss that I can win Christ. If there's anything that gets in that way, it's not worth it. I'm sure Paul had some things. But what he was saying was, I am not going to allow anything to get between me and what I'm trying to attain. And if there's anything that I'm trying to uh, try, uh, if anything that's in the way, I'm going to count it but lost. I'm going to lose that thing so I can have Christ. Do you understand what I'm saying? I, I love being married. You know, I, I, I don't want to not be married. I don't practice. For, if she went before me, I, I don't know what I would do. To be honest, I, I don't know what I would do. I probably just. I'm not, you know, not doomsday. I would probably just sit there staring for probably a few days before I would even get up. I, I would just be just lost. But I'm telling you right here today, if it came between her and my salvation, it wouldn't be, it would be very easy. <laughs> Hello? Oh. Uh, I'm sorry, that would be a very easy choice to make. Would it be painful? Sure. Would it be heartfelt? Sure. But I'm telling you what, I'm, I have my mind made. Now, see, I told you I had this message for a couple of months now. No targets. No targets. Hear me? No targets. Life is too short to live a life of regret. Now, I'm going to hit a couple of things, and I, and I don't know what I'm hitting yet, but I'm going to hit a couple of things. I, I can just feel it in the Holy Ghost. Life is too short to live a life of regret. And I'm not saying this by way of, of, of knowledge. I'm saying by way of the Holy Ghost. There are some people who are living here, right in this building today, you're, you are so full of regret. And you can't move on to what God is trying to give you because you're so bent out of shape for what has happened in your life and what hasn't happened in your life. And you can tell. See, I, you know, and I, I know some of you. I probably get on your nerves because I like to uh, nerves because I like to have. I just like to have a good time. I like to have fun. Because life is too short to walk around miserable. I'm sorry. And if you don't want to be happy, you know. You, now I, I'm not talking about being foolish. You know what I mean? Oh, thank you, brother. I'm sorry. You can you can hold that. Yeah, it's nothing. There's nothing in there. But you actually you can put something in it if you want to. Load me up. <laughs> it's too short to live a life of regret. And I used to, Brother Brown, uh, Elder Brown, I'm sorry. I, I used to be oppressed and depressed. I, I knew what it was like walking around looking mad all the time. You know what I'm saying? Mug all broke down. And I, I, I was raised, and some of you know, I was raised in a neighborhood. You, 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 you didn't walk around smiling. Not the neighborhood I was raised in. You better not. You know what I mean? In the neighborhood I walked around in, you had to have your frown broke, you know, broke down. You had to have that walk. Huh? Right? I, I know you know what I'm talking about, brother. <laughs> that way you got that walk. Uh, you better. Don't look happy. 
Do not look happy. Look mean. Look like you're mad. Because that's what's accepted. You know that's the truth. You walk around like this and then walk around, hey, how you doing? No, you don't do that. Especially if you don't know someone. Then, you know, if, he, if, he, if he's your homeboy, right? That's what y'all say, right? Yeah. If he's your homeboy, you got to shake his hand for about 20 minutes. You know? But if he's not your homeboy, and then someone does something, and if you're in the store, you're supposed to let everybody else know that you don't like something because it makes you feel like you fit in. I wonder what's taking them so long. I wish they get a new, they need more help in here. Well, look at that. They all slow. Don't act like y'all don't do that, y'all. <laughs> mm-hmm. Got you. Right? That's how we act. I'm talking about winning Christ now. See, because we don't think about winning Christ when it comes to our conduct and our attitude and our disposition we think we can act any old type of way we think we have a right to be bent out of shape and have an attitude and if you walk in here with an attitude I know you keep an attitude out there you don't have a reason to have an attitude in here to be quite honest I don't like this and I don't like that. There's a lot of things I don't like. I don't like the way. Oh. Uh -huh. Who said that? I'm going to talk about it. Here it is. John the Baptist is in prison. In prison. Now, this guy's about to be beheaded. And he sends a message to Jesus. Hey, guys, ask him, is he really the one? Here I am in prison. Find out if he's the one that we were waiting for. Jesus said, okay, go back and tell John, the dead is raised, the blind can see, the deaf can hear, the crippled, they can walk. Oh, also tell John this, hey, he that is offended and how I run his, what did he say? Huh? Oh, blessed is he, that's right. You know what the word blessed means? That means blessed. Like money, bless, you know, like we think. Blessed means happy, is he, that is not offended in how I run his life, basically. Happy is he who doesn't get all offended in how I run his life. You ought to be happy how Jesus runs your life. I don't like this. I don't know why, I'm, why am I in this situation. Why am, why am I in that situation? I don't know, ask Jesus. Well, he won't answer me. Blessed is he. Who don't, you know how you can get, a, you, how you can tell you're offended when, at the way Jesus runs your life? Are you happy? He said, happy is he who's not offended in me. Right? Happy is he who's not offended in me. One translation says, happy is he who's not offended the way I run his life. Because that's what John the Baptist was like, hey. Why did Jesus tell him that? Because John the Baptist was bent out of shape that he was in prison. A few years before, he was saying, hey, I must decrease and he must increase. As long as he was baptizing people and as long as he had his, uh, his bag filled with honey and as long as the locust was flying around and he can eat the locust, and everybody was coming to him in the wilderness, and he was having a lot of pre people to preach to and people to baptize. Hey, he said, hey, I, I must decrease, and he must increase. Well, he decreased right behind the prison bars, and Jesus increased, healing everybody, racing dead and all that. And now he's wondering, is you really the Christ? I supposed to be leading the way. What's going on here? Jesus said, everything is happening is supposed to be happening. And just don't be offended in the way I run your life. 
You must count everything but loss and dung that you can win me. And you can tell. You can tell. Oh. You know, some people say, you know what? I ain't going to laugh and smile or whatever because I don't want to be phony. I don't want to fake. Do you know it's easier to do like to, to put your lips like this than it is to frown? Do you know it takes more than twice the amount of muscles to do this? I want everybody to know I'm miserable. Let's see. There's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So if I'm in the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost is in me, I should not walk around all bent out of shape all the time. That's telling me I'm not yielding to the Holy Ghost. Oh, I'm trying to help somebody. Give me a brother, you single. Almost. Huh? What'd you say? Now I'm gonna ask her to watch that what thing would you say? Huh? Huh? <laughs> you married or you engaged? So what are you? Huh? What are you? On my way. He on his way. <laughs> uh -huh. Smart man. Sorry, ladies, he's not available. So so, now, we got to do this thing right. I should have had her come, but I don't want to embarrass her anymore than she's been embarrassed. And so, you know, the husband and wife come to service, you know, and, you know, it's nobody else on the pool, the, 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 uh, the, uh, the whole pew. I don't mean to push you like that. Don't you? you know what I meant, you know. And that's what, you know, that's what they do, you know, like. And, it, you know, sit down, go ahead, sit down, brother. It's okay. Don't mess up my equipment now. <laughs> yeah, that's it, getting further away, further away. Honey, you got a problem. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm, I'm, oh, 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 let's move on to the next one. <laughs> Life is too short. I said life is too short. It's too short. To, I'm trying to help somebody. I want to live this thing. You know what? I'm not just okay. I'm just biding my time. And then, you know, God, Jesus is going to take me to heaven. No, we have to live it now. I'm trying to win Christ. Paul said, could you put that on the screen, that I may win Christ? Philippians, is it? Uh, what's the verse I'm looking for? Eight. No, no it's not eight. Yeah, that is, that I may win Christ. He said, I counted, wait, he left, come on. He count all things done that he might win Christ. In other words, he was saying, I hadn't won him yet. I hadn't won him yet. Now, you go ahead. I think my wife is better in this role anyway. You fired. Come on. I'm just going to help somebody. Come on, first lady. In case y'all didn't know, you see that? Those of you who tried to convince her to go out and participate in these games. Please stop it. <laughs> As she began the race, the people that were next to me, I said, she's about to fall, y'all. Yeah, I said, she's getting ready to fall. I'm telling you right now. And she's going to hurt herself. I just hope I don't have to take her to the hospital. Literally, I said that just moments before she went. I've been living for long enough to know. It's, 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 so it's, it's bound to happen. He said, I count all things dung that I may win Christ. You know, you, a lot of marriages would, would work a whole, lot of, a whole lot better if you treat that person like you hadn't won him yet.
Keep it G now. Keep it G. Keep it G. See that? You're dismissed in Jesus' name. <laughs> You, I, here we go. You know how you treated them when you were trying to win them? Before you had them and you were trying to win them? Now, some of you, you're not married, but you know what I'm talking about when you were out there, some of you. Don't act like that. You, you know what I'm talking about, right? When, you, 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 when, you, when you're trying to win them, you act a certain way. You know, they say after you get that ring on your finger, they change. Hello? I, I'm, I'm sorry. But Paul was saying, hey, I'm married to Christ and I'm still trying to win him. See, some of you act like I already have him. I got Christ in me so I can do whatever I want. I can go doing anything I want, Jesus. I'll see you when I get back home. I'll see you 4 o'clock in the morning when I come back. I'm going to stay out all night. That's what we do with Jesus. Like we're not still trying to win him. And Paul was saying, I count everything but dung. A loss. I have to win Christ. You see, there's no thing, such thing as being a fanatic. You know, in other words, I, it, you know what they call a fanatic. I don't mind me being a fanatic, but it's really not being fanatical. It's being, to me, being practical. Because everything I do that I can win Christ, there's nothing extra about that. You understand? That's just practical. But we, we, we see that as being fanatical. But I, if I can treat her like that, like I hadn't won her yet, she... She's my best friend most of the time. That's just true. And, and I'm best, her best friend all the time. No, just most of the time. And, and, and hopefully, you know, she still does things like she's trying to win me. And she'll surprise me with stuff I like. Not just on my birthday, on Christmas. As a matter of fact, we don't even buy any, any, each other things. Now, I know some of you, you're gonna, you, can, you can go back out. You can go back up. You're not going back. You're going to stay right here. Don't go to the back. I might use you again. We don't even buy, pe buy each other gifts on Christmas. I say, what? Now, I'm not preaching a new doctrine. Because for years, she was saying, we're not going to buy any, anything for each other on Christmas. And she would say that, and I would still buy <laughs> For years I did that, and she got mad. Don't you be going out buying anything. You, we, we, we said, why? You know, be, because if I, if the height of my love is the, demo, the, the demonstration of my love is what I get, to, get for her on Christmas, huh? I, I don't believe that's the height. And so if I can act like every, every chance I get is Christmas, I'm going to help some of you married guys out. So by the time you get to Christmas, it's like, I don't really need that. Help some of you women out. Complain. And this is not a marriage seminar, but I don't know. We prayed about households. Stop complaining about him and give him. St oh. Stop complaining. <laughs> oh, I'm having fun tonight. <laughs> and I know I'm talking about marriage. But I'm, I'm really not just talking about marriage. Hello? I'm talking about our relationship with Christ. Because, you know, I like to do is I like to... It's okay to get this. 
right? You know what I'm doing? I'm shaking your hand and being friendly. But I'm checking the sheep. And then I I get to someone. Like, what's wrong? Why? I'm not trying to come down on you. I'm not trying to, you know, make you feel bad or I'm not judge. Don't judge me. I'm not judging you. The bottom line is this. Either, either, either the book is real or it's not real. And either I'm a, a child of God or I'm not a child of God. Either I'm supposed to have peace and joy or I don't supposed to have peace and joy. Oh. And I'm not talking about 24, 7, 3, 65. If someone just lost their loved one, I don't expect them to get up and like, everything is fine. No, I'm, that's not what I'm saying. But when we live a life, and I'm almost done. Let me realize it was 8, 17. When we live a life of total, and I know I'm not preaching 100 miles an hour. But when we live a life of regret, and like we're losing out, and, and, and like uh, we are victims, we're not. It doesn't, you know, my wife could leave me. Tomorrow, if she had any sense, she wouldn't go anywhere. <laughs> She's going to get me tonight, right? <laughs> you know, she could leave me tomorrow. Man, I can, I can take, knock my back out of whack. I can get in an accident and lose my vehicle. You know, a tree could fall on my house and, it, you know, all these things could happen to me. Hello? But I got a question for you. What and all those things affected inside of here? Only what I let allow and let. And so when I get over the, the shock of these things, I can still say, you know what? I'm not going to let these things ruin my life. I'm not going to allow that to ruin my disposition. I'm not going to allow that to ruin my spirit. I don't want my spirit to become bitter. I don't want to, to, to uh, have an offense toward God or toward man. And I, I'm not going to get all bent out of shape and lose out on my salvation because my, my, life, my wife went left, out, left me. That's not happening. I'm not saying that. Do you understand what I'm getting at? I, what I'm saying is that no matter what comes along your way, it is the will of the Father for you to count any and all things. He said, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. Why? That I may win him. Anybody want you to stand? Anybody want to win Christ? You had the Holy Ghost launch? You've been filled with the Spirit? You've been baptized in his name? Have you won Christ? Oh, smart man. Maybe he's won me, but I hadn't won him yet. Have anybody won Christ in here yet? I, I, hey, this is a new revelation here. Have you won Christ yet? Why well, we act like we're there? I know this is simple, a simple message. But we need to live our lives just like that. I am trying to win Christ. If, if I was trying to win my wife right now, like just say for instance, I don't have a doghouse, but if I, if I was in one, if I was trying to win her, I would go out and buy her roses. I would buy her flowers. Uh, uh, that's, you know, flower, roses or flowers. I'd buy her cards, maybe some candy. I would, I, I would do so many different, you know, things to get out of the doghouse. Why? Because I'm trying to win her affection. I got a question for you. I know you've come to church tonight. I know you live for him, but what have you done lately to win his affection? What have you considered lost that you can have him?
I'm going to open this altar up to each and every one of us. I know this is, isn't one of those jumping and screaming messages.